This episode is part of the transformational podcast Systems in Motion. If you want to learn more about the leverage points, please listen to the opening episode. Pia takes us on her excursion through wetlands to wake us up and make us realize how important they are for the world's climate. This is Pia talking about the importance of protecting Arctic wetlands for climate change mitigation. I would like to take you on a journey to the north of the globe, a journey to the Arctic. Here, almost half of the world's wetlands are located, and they cover nearly 60% of the Arctic, and this way are forming the main ecosystem found there. For mitigating climate change, the protection of the functioning of these Arctic wetlands is crucial. And why this is so crucial, I would like to talk about in this contribution of our compendium. Before starting to talk about how protecting Arctic wetlands contributes to climate change mitigation, first we should clarify the questions, what are wetlands and how do they look like? In general, there is not one definition of wetlands, but there are three common indicators of wetlands that all definitions share. One important indicator is permanently or temporary standing water. Then, the vegetation of wetlands is hydrophytic which means that plants growing there are water-loving and vegetation must cover at least half of the water area. And the growth of hydrophytic vegetation is supported by hydric soils, the third indicator, which means that the soil is permanently or periodically saturated by water, which leads to anaerobic conditions and activation of certain biogeochemical processes. And what kind of wetland ecosystems are found in the Arctic? Mostly you can find peatlands, shallow open water areas, wet tundra areas and shallow seashores. Okay, now knowing how wetlands are defined, I can come back to the question why protecting Arctic wetlands is important for climate change mitigation. And with protection I mean especially protecting the functionality of wetlands and in general preserving wetland area in the Arctic. Arctic wetlands have served as carbon sinks since deglaciation. The prevailing conditions of low temperatures and waterlogged areas slow down the decomposition rate that has favored carbon sequestration. Therefore, Arctic wetlands, especially peat and permafrost soils, store the largest amount of global carbon, acting as an important stabilizing stock of the global carbon cycle, which refers to leverage point 11. Reducing the damage and degradation of wetlands in order to maintain the size of this carbon stock is an important leverage point to avoid changing the global carbon cycle system. However, Arctic wetlands are facing extensive and rapid changes. On the one hand, they are degraded and damaged by human activities on local level, most commonly by ditching and drainage, construction of infrastructure and transport. On the other hand, climate change impacts due to human activities outside the Arctic threaten Arctic wetlands even more. Climate warming and associated permafrost thaw turn the sink into a source of carbon that no longer removes but releases carbon and other greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. And climate change leads to both shrinkage as well as extension of wetland areas. And unfortunately, both will increase emissions and thus contribute to accelerating climate change. Let me explain you how this happens. When the climate gets warmer and drier, wetlands dry out and thus shrink in size. But wetlands, especially peatlands, protect permafrost from thawing because the cold water serves as insulation. And with warming temperatures and retreating water, permafrost is thawing and the stored carbon starts to be released to the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. But as already said, the extension of wetlands is critical as well. Water logging and increasing water temperature are leading to accelerated anaerobic decomposition rates. This turns the carbon released by permafrost thaw into methane, which is an even more potent greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. In addition, expansion of warming water areas will further accelerate permafrost thaw as water keeps heat longer than air does. According to projections in the IPCC special report Climate Change and Land, Published in 2019, 21-37% to of Arctic permafrost would thaw if the 1.5 target was reached. With a temperature increase around 2 degrees, 35-47% to will likely thaw. 
so almost a half, somewhere between 2 and 3 degrees temperature increase in comparison to pre-industrial times. Arctic permafrost is projected to collapse due to passing tipping points. What becomes clearly visible is that permafrost thaw and increasing carbon emissions by degraded and damaged wetlands can form a reinforcing feedback loop, which is leverage 0.7. Once temperatures have reached a critical threshold, permafrost will continue to thaw and further contribute to climate change. Even if global anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions were cut down completely, this positive feedback loop would still gain strength by emissions released from permafrost thaw. This means that measures are needed to limit permafrost thaw in order to avoid an irreversible and self-enhancing thawing of permafrost that can make other climate change mitigation measures meaningless. The two leverage points mentioned so far show that intervening there in the system will not shift the system to the better but to the worse. So current actions that activate these levers should be stopped. But where could be intervened in order to protect Arctic wetlands for climate change mitigation? The CAFF, which is the Biodiversity Working Group of the Arctic Council, states in its report on how to achieve resilience and good management of Arctic wetlands that degradation of Arctic wetlands is a public policy issue whose importance has been missing acknowledgement by governmental institutions for a long time. Iceland, who is one member country of the Arctic Council, is one of the first countries that became aware of this and took the initiative to work on this issue. After nearly half of Iceland's wetland areas have been affected by degrading and damaging land use activities since the mid of the last century, they already started in 1995 to restore and preserve unused wetlands, mainly aiming for protection of biodiversity. This has been supported also by governmental policies like the so-called environmental impact assessment that requires compensating degradation or damage of wetlands by restoring another wetland area of the same size somewhere else in Iceland. With accelerating climate change and the IPCC accepting especially peatland restoration as a mitigation strategy, the protection and restoration of wetlands as mitigation measurement has gained increasing attention. Iceland became aware that their extensively drained peatlands were emitting two-thirds of their total anthropogenic greenhouse gases. In 2008, they took the initiative to ensure restoration of wetlands as LULUCF activity in the second commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol. They claim that for reducing wetlands emissions, not only incentives for restoration, but also for stopping degradation and damage would be needed. So introducing more incentives were identified here as leverage point 5 to stop emissions by damaged and degraded wetlands, and this way contributing to climate protection. Iceland has adopted protection and restoration of their wetlands as mitigation measures in their climate action plan for 2018 until 2030. This also includes concrete steps of advice and financial support, which is an important sign that wetland restoration has gained essential importance and awareness in the government and contributes to closing the gap in missing public policies. But drivers of change exist on every level, from local to global, so also a variety of public policy responses is needed. And to wide extent, change is driven by impacts on global level, which makes protection of Arctic wetlands even more complex, and degradation and damage is not just solved by national level policies. Adopting protection and restoration of carbon-rich ecosystems like Arctic wetlands in the Paris Agreement and the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration from 2021 to 2030, stating that wetlands as a carbon sink will have to contribute significantly to climate change mitigation in order to stay below 2 degrees temperature increase, are other important steps towards raising awareness of the importance of protecting Arctic wetlands. Arctic countries, like Iceland, are taking the first steps on the ground. Now it's up to the rest of the world to make their contribution by reducing their emissions. Because in the end it will not be only the Arctic countries and communities who will benefit from protecting their wetlands, but basically the whole world due to wetlands' influence on the global climate system. This episode was produced in cooperation with Meet Studios.